Hello, all of you wonderful beans out there, and welcome to the stream. I am Raw Zim, and this is Data Resistance Squad Scar. Season 1, Episode 21, They Come for Askenvale. We shall begin as we usually do with introductions! Though, as always, this is one of our Digimon Tabletop RPG campaigns using our custom SCAR system for stories and creatures in alternate realities. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Kerr. Hello, everyone. I'm Kerr. I am the storyteller. I am the one here who brings you happy, joyful, fun times. And we are here to have happy, joyful, fun times. Right? Of course. Uh, and yeah, fun. hello everybody. I am Razim. I am playing as Asher, the Labramon. He is Astral Light type. And a god of death. And I am. And I am Toshime, and I'm playing Brioche, the Burgermon. The basic type. Hello, everybody. My name is Gary, and I'm here to play Charles Madoff, the funky little Rainamon. That's a wind basic type. He's going to tell you all about this great new cryptocurrency. You're going to love it. Hello all, I'm Drunk Dragon Era from my own channel, Drunk underscore Dragon underscore Era, so that way Zim doesn't have to say it, I'll be running tomorrow if you guys want to rejoin at around 5pm Central Time. In the meantime, I'm going to be playing Chase, the Black uh, uh, Gillyman X Shadow Mythic type. Hi everyone, I'm Brian. I play the traitorous Dracomon X, known as Magna who is a fire shadow type, and I just love to say that there's no one else flying, so I'm happy. And I have spites in my veins because of the armor. All right, I am Taldirus, and I'll be playing Riv, the mythic earth type Vorvamon. Uh, he is very interested in his new helmet. Um, my turn? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, my name is Rygon from the channel Rygon Plays, and I am playing Spectre, the Gamma Mod. Uh, impromptu leader? He likes knives. Uh, and he is Mythic Steel type, or something like that. Mythic Metal. All right, on to the recap. Uh, let's see. Eh, go for it, Riv. All right, I am a little bit fuzzy on the details, so free here to pipe up if I miss something because it's uh been a hot second. But uh, you know, we were at Titus's place. Um. At least, mostly, we uh, we were kind of splitting up a tiny bit to go have uh, some private conversations. But uh, Titus ended up helping with, uh, you know, uh, Asher's, um, you know, uh, cancer problem. Uh, it gave him some sort of treatment that made him feel a fair bit better. It takes about a month between doses, if I remember correctly. Yeah, one month a dose. He also asked consent, and when he was told no, actually respected it. Yeah, I know. Amazing. Um, it turns out <coughs> that uh, Titus and the High King know each other. Uh, uh, and they had a rather awkward... Um, I guess not breakup is the right word, but falling out. <laughs> uh, so Ash did not want to go see Titus. Uh, Titus was being really weird about the possibility of Ash being there when Ash did eventually end up showing up after Riv basically said, hey, you should go talk to your friend because he's been alone for 200 years. Um, 
then uh, we split off and have a couple different conversations. Uh, Bal comes by and sees that, uh, you know, Spectre is missing, asks after him, but uh, overall starts pushing onto the fact that there was an explosion and uh, he's on the lookout for a human, a human arsonist that used explosives. No idea where he got them, uh, right, Chase? <coughs> The social anarchist has nothing to do with this. Yes, obviously not. Um, so what ends up happening is that, uh, you know, Bal sort of like manages to detect the I extreme lying going on, but uh, Ash kind of mouths to him to that they're un that like you know everyone is under royal protection here and to leave it alone. Uh, to which a couple members of the party end up kind of a, uh, you know taking notice, or specifically, I believe it was Charles that took notice. Uh-huh. Uh, so it turns out that uh, Ash can make water clones that can fully communicate, because um, after Charles and Magna have a conversation in the woods about this very topic, uh, Ash comes out of the woods and proceeds to talk to them, and also kind of, uh, you know, threaten them a bit. Just, just Only a light Charles. threatening. Just Only a light Charles threatening. is threatened. Uh, just a little bit. Just, just a light threatening. As a treat. As a treat. Uh, so after that whole situation, uh, Ball kind of just also mentioned that he was going to be like scouting around a bit for the missing individual. Uh, and did anything else really happen? Uh, Besides the armor and all that? Sorry. We got our armor, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure we started to grill Ash after Magna revealed the future to Ash. Well, so first Magna found out... Uh, Magna had an inkling since the first time that they met, due to the fact being that he tried to bring it up with Jace that they had the exact same magic, and Jace pushed it aside, but Magna revealed to Ash first after Charles left that he knew Ash was the High King and then came out to Ash finding out the identity that there was a third calamity it was? A third one I think it was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a third calamity that hasn't shown up yet that apparently pretends to be Digimon. I've been spoiled by Kerr and I hate it. Um... But other than that, Magna talked to him for a bit and then they came back and that's when it was revealed to everyone that's like, oh, hey, there's this big threat and everything. And also I accidentally revealed to him about the future and turns out he already knew about it. And we came up with theories and everything about why we were sent into the past. Well, oh, yeah, then Riv rules. got mad at their cyclical reasoning a bit when he found out. Oh, yeah, and the, which led to a deep discussion about, uh, well, mainly Jace, but the rest of the party starting to drill into Ash about how stupid of an idea it would be to cause an entire war and cause so much suffering <coughs> just to lead us to be good people and be sent back in time. Um, And then also, <coughs> Magnus like, hey, this is actually a problem and stuff. And also, when he found out that his armor used to belong to Horu, he cursed so loud, he, I'm pretty sure everyone from the town could hear it. Yeah, last we left off, I believe we were mid-grill of uh, Ash. And the human ran up. All right, before the ball showed up, the human ran up and was like, hey, I bombed a place. And we were like, or na apparently Asher was like, yeah, go back to the house, I got this. And that's how we ended up in that situation. Magna was confused. Well, you know, Asher and Jace might have taught some things to certain humans that might be trying to, you know, undo slavery. Magna yeah. wasn't ready. And now it's time for story time from Kerr. Yes. Wait for the beach episode, everyone gets your swimsuits. From tabletop spoilers. We're ready, Kerr. You're obviously going to read that, right? 
I mean, if someone else wants to, they can. I will just slip away into the darkness for a few moments. But you got such a pretty voice, Kerr. No, I do not. No, I, I, I think you have a pretty, yes, you do. pretty voice. Yeah. There's no way to escape from this. You do have a really pretty voice. The other... Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm That's not a fair good point, Kurt. You, may, you make a very solid us. point. One of us should probably do it. I, I am okay if someone else wishes to. I will just step away. I am very bad about seeing my stuff uh, said out loud, even by me. I am not good with it because I wrote this in like 20 minutes to a half hour. Like, it's not my best work or anything. <laughs> Say my music's bad. It's not. Your your music is really good. And your stories are very good. Th these are just quickies that I so just do. Was, so was Distance Whispers. I wrote it in 20 minutes and practiced it for a week. But yes, if someone <laughs> wants to read it out loud, that's perfectly fine. <coughs> I tried, guys. Sorry. Truly, this is the dankest dungeon. You know things to Sky the Valley says, I'm Kerr is a pretty kitty, and we all know it. <laughs> I know, thank you so much for that tip. Thank you for supporting the channel. I, I could try, but oh god. Oh, <laughs> Oh, I'll play another song. Oh no. Oh no. The tips have started. I can I can try to do it out loud, but oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, it's gonna be so bad. Ugh. Do you guys really want me to read it out loud? Yes, yes. Like we believe in you. I think it'd be pretty epic. Fuck. Oh, oh god. Even Rex oh. in the other room saying yes, please. Ah! <laughs> and now his tail is whapping the wall. <laughs> Alright, let me give you some music. Woohoo! <laughs> Fudge muffins. Uh, we loved you, Kerr. I'm going to go die in a corner. Offering. I played music live on stream. Brian the song I wrote. For the Two of them now. Thank you, Brian. Re. You can do a cur. Hey, give me a moment. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. Uh... Don't worry, I'm getting my own music right now. I made a promise, but I didn't promise exactly what, so you guys are just getting pure guitar. Oh, no. Well. All right. All right. I know what song I'm going to listen to. I know what song I'm going to listen to. All right. Is it the good song? Yes, it is, because I need it right now. Okay. There we go. All right. All right, who's ready for story time with Kerr? Even Rex is cheering in the other room. Oh, I love it. Okay. Okay. God, I, uh, I'm just going to see every mistake I made when I did this. Okay, okay, come on, come on. We can do this, 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 we can do this. Get into character. Focus. Three. Okay. Okay. We can do this. A wise we got a cur. We got a cur. Lysandrelli, thank you very much for that follow. Okay. Got my thing out. Got my wawa. Wawa? Let's <laughs> Yes, my Wawa. You got it, Kerr. Let's go. Here, have a, a character voice. Here, have a slight distraction, real quick. 
A fan art from Raijin. Stop it! <laughs> Lol. Lamau. Rai, Raijin. Raijin. Thank you. Thank you, Raijin. What did he do? <laughs> Thank you so much, Raijin. <laughs> Raijin. <laughs> You're amazing. That's cute. I'm actually waiting for it to pop up on stream. There it is. Raijin did Why? a fantastic job. Why is it Sailor Magna? Because, obviously. With the power of the moon, I will totally betray you. With the power of the moon, no secret is safe. Magna uses his hidden skill. Show my hand. I have to say, Magna's able to rock that outfit, though. Okay, so... Yes, Magna's able to. I'm not, though. I think it's up to uh, Rygon on whether or not you're going to be rocking that outfit in real life. Oh, God. What's going on? Oh, fan art. Uh, oh, you must be on your stream. Let me pull your stream up. All right. All right. It's time for story time. I wrote this yesterday, about 10 o'clock. You know, normal things. Happy fun times. This story, this story takes place uh, specifically right before uh, last the last session when they ran into Ball and uh, Percy. Just to give everyone a sort of context of where this story takes place at. Okay. God damn my freaking anxiety. Okay, we got this, got this. Better hurry or I'm gonna do it in a silly voice. Okay, okay. This farm is no longer safe. Evacuate the children out of here. Any of the humans old enough to wield weapons, arm them. They're coming. Soldiers of the King, prepare for battle. Messengers, take to the air. War and Askin Veil of is on the way. The way Guru Ruman moved through the chaos of the human farm, his beautiful armor gleaming in the light of the sun. Ball leapt up onto the wall that surrounded the farm and looked out at the massing of the... What had the High King recently taken to calling them? These... Proto X. No doubt it was the swarm that his lord had sent him to wipe out. He had thought he had caught them beforehand, but this. It was like a tide of death slowly advancing their way. Thankfully, they were slow. It would take them at least a day or two to reach Askenvale. Longer if they could stall them here, or better yet, stop them. He glanced over his shoulder as the messengers took to the air and let out a sigh of relief. Regardless of what would happen, Askenvale would be warned, and they could begin to evacuate or call upon the High King's army to fly here to help. That did not matter, though. He had a duty to do. He had sworn upon his name he would do all he could to wipe out these abominations. <clears throat> he reached to his side and drew the sword the High King had gifted him upon the acceptance of his name and title of Royal Knight. It was a source of his pride and a promise to uphold the oaths he had sworn to his lord. So long as he breathed, he would stand fast in defense of the digital world. As he looked out at the tide of twisted gray forms, he saw them do something he had never observed before. They began to lose their semi-Digimon-like shape and start to flow together, growing larger and larger. A great hand shearing into the ground and tearing out a massive chunk from it. And Ball's blood turned cold as he whirled around. Incoming! Prepare for a barrage! He roared at the top of his lungs before turning back as the creature reared its arm back and hurled that truly great chunk of earth right towards them to obliterate everything. 
Ball took a deep breath in and focused, drawing his blade up as blue flames ignited along the sword, and he drew it back. This sword is the proof of law, the flaming castle walls that correct all injustice. His blue and white fur darkened to a blood red, lightning crackling around him. The power along the blade seemed to solidify into a solid mass of crackling flames mixed with lightning. With a roar that sounded like the crack of thunder, he swung his blade forward. Neil, Black Dog Galantine! The power lashed out like a wild beast and it struck the massive mound of earth and stone. But rather than one single mass of stone that would have wiped the farm from the map, the walls and buildings were instead shattered as dozens of smaller cart-sized stones crashed into it. Not far from the farm though, Watching from the safety of the trees, a human teenage boy looked back at the young faces staring at him. Just like I showed you, blow the carts, make distractions. Those are mostly, mostly merchants and workers, not soldiers with the humans. Get them into the trees. I'll make sure they keep their attention on me. Young Percy said gently to them. His eyes drifted to the shattered walls and the night Digimon who had just used everything he had to save the farm and all the people, both Digimon and human alike. Those monsters were coming. The soldiers were in disarray and trying to help the survivors, and nobody was there to help him after what he had done. It would be a huge blow to the king if one of his greatest knights was dragged down. But his mind drifted back to those two Digimon who hadn't cared he was human, who had taught him how to make explosives and been kind to him. Would they abandon a Digimon to be killed? Worse, did he want to be like those Digimon who cared nothing for anyone? Was that what he wanted to teach these humans that he was trying to free from slavery? No. No, it wasn't. He extended a hand, the familiar spear forming in his palm, the cold sorrow and sadness washing through him as he clutched it. The pain of a dream forever lost, of a hope doomed to never be. He could almost feel it. Once, this had been a weapon meant to bring hope and redemption. Now, it was simply a weapon meant to end everything. Percy started to run forward, driving the spear out before him. Execute! Spirit! Evolution! A swirling circle of data formed before him as he bounded through it, his body turning to data and shifted and changing. White fur began to sprout over his body as he grew taller, sank just shy of six feet, with red highlights to his fur. The Labramon landed nimbly as he continued to run, a gleaming blue light forming on the tip of the spear. Come, Goten! He yelled, the galloping of a horse sounding through the air, as from the water vapor hanging in the very air, a great horse bounded into existence. Percy nimbly pulled himself onto the creature's back, ducking low as it picked up speed and holding tight to its liquid mane to avoid being bugged off. He would be different. He would follow in the example of those two kind Digimon. Back at the wall, Ball had been forced to abandon his perch, panting heavily as he knelt in the grass before a great rent in the metal wall. Before them, they were coming, like an unending swarm. The giant had once more broken apart into its component pieces, and they were swarming for the kill. But he had burned too much power. He needed at least another minute to recover his strength, but the Wergaruman forced his burning body to its feet. He would not die cowed on his knees. He would fight, even in this state, to buy the survivors as much time as he possibly could. Behind him, he could hear the sound of hooves coming, and Baal chanced a look over his shoulder, blinking in surprise as he saw a lone Digimon riding a great horse of water. It was just a rookie, though, a paltry little Labramon. The knight could not help but feel a throne of pride in this Digimon's will to charge forth against impossible odds, even as he felt terror at what looked to be an innocent throwing himself into harm's way. Lightning crackled along his body, his aching form screaming even as he forced himself to stand taller, more regal. He was a knight of the High King, one of the two holy knights of the land. This commoner could face death with honor and pride, and he would face it alongside him as comrades in arms. Percy looked over at the knight as he saw him starting to recover, but even he could tell he was far from perfect. Goten, go! Just as he was about to pass a ball, Percy leapt from the back of his horse, a blazing blue light igniting along the tip of his spear as he swung it outwards. 
and the horse exploded into a tidal wave rushing forward and striking into the front lines of the Proto-X, washing them back and tangling them among each other. Well met, Sir Knight, though you, may mer you bear no armor or crest. What you are doing here proves you are worthy of such a title. May I have the honor of knowing the name of the one I may fall beside? Ball asked as he looked at the other Digimon. Percy looked over at him and gave him a weak smile. Percival, but you can call me Percy. And we're not going to die here. Using some time to recover, right? Get everyone back together? I can do that for you. He glanced down at the spear and he could feel its presence. Yeah. It could do so. If he was willing to pay the cost, it could do so. He glanced over at one of the most fearsome and deadly Digimon in the world. The one said devour his enemies and lovers both. The one looked on the one looked on with fear and worry, even as he conducted himself with perfect chivalry, so the stories went. How could he ever expect things though to change if someone didn't try to do so? He wanted to live in a world like the one he'd heard about from Asher and his father. He wanted to go on adventures like that with Digimon. He wanted them all to be able to live together and coexist. If this was the price to make such a world, so be it. Percy took a moment to gather himself before he lifted the spear up and gripped it tightly with both hands. He could feel the spear thrum in time with his heartbeat, and for a moment, a second presence seemed to spread up into him from the weapon. Sacred Lance, release dual restraints! A pair of swirling digital codes erupted along the spear's blade, and a matching golden collar formed around Percy's neck, the digi-script etched into the metal blazing with a silver light. Countdown! May a precious miracle descend upon this place. Percy thrusted the spear up into the air as the swirling rings along the blade shattered, and he began to float upwards into the air. A great ring of water spread out under his feet as he tightened both hands onto the spear and reversed it, tip facing down towards the hordes on the ground. Longinus, count zero! He drove it down into the shimmering sheen of the great water mirror that had been crafted. As the spear made contact, the entire construct ignited with a sapphire light, and the Labramon felt his life force being ripped from his body, being drained into the spear to feel the miracle it was creating. And from the mirror, thousands of spears came raining out, shearing and obliterating all of the proto eggs while also forming into a great glowing barrier of silver light that forced the abominations back from its divine light. His work done, the power flooded out of him as Percy fell from the sky. He braced himself to hit the ground, but the impact never happened as he struck something metal and yet he felt no pain. Bao grunted as he hit the ground, holding the Labramon tightly to his chest. He had not seen such miracles work since the last time the High King had taken to the battlefield himself centuries ago during the Locust War. You truly deserve your title, Sir Knight. That was a grand working. Bao complimented the exhausted-looking Labramon. He glanced up at the great glowing wall. The light was still burning bright, but it was a temporary measure at best. And while it had wiped out a great swath of the proto -X, no doubt more would be coming unless they found the one creating them. Still, they did nothing to mar this victory. Now they had the time to evacuate. They had time to ensure these humans and Digimons could be taken to town and defense plans drawn up. I am in your debt, Sir Percival. When the High King hears of your deeds, I am sure your reward will be grand indeed. Baal rumbled proudly. Percy let out a groan, feeling himself losing control of the spirit evolution, his body digitizing before shattering, returning once more to its human state just as explosions cut through the air. Baal blinked in shock as the noble Digimon turned into a human, his head whipping out over to look towards the sounds of the explosions. What was happening? Had the proto X gone behind them? His eyes narrowed as he saw humans using some sort of makeshift devices to damage the guards and drive some of the lesser Digimon back, helping the farm humans to run towards the safety of the forest. He looked down at the human, shock evident on his face, but Percy was already moving, pushing off against him and hitting the ground, the spear glowing as he slammed his palm into the earth and the ground dissolved into a swirling rift of water as his body fell through. However, before the rift of water could close, Baal drove his own sword into the edge, keeping it open. And through it, he could see another forest, and just through the edges of the trees, he could see a lake in what seemed to be a cabin. Soldiers! Form up! We're going after this human! He yelled back over his shoulder, some of his men quickly rushing to join him. He was going to figure out what this human was doing, and what he had just done to save him as well. 
And that is how Percy and Ball ended up where you guys are. Very nice. I was needed. I like that one. Yes. It, well it was a, it was a little bit of extra context. It's like it's never going to come up, so I wanted to show it. Um uh, Yes, um, it's like, yes, I am chasing this human who is obviously causing terrorism. Well, secretly, it's more like, I, this guy just saved my life, but he was doing this. I really want to catch him to find out what the hell was going on. But I can't tell these people that. Hey, look, he went the other way. It's like, oh god, this guy's probably gonna want to kill me. And Ball's just like, I don't want to kill him. I just want to talk to him and find out what's going on. I owe him. We did it. We saved everyone. But yes, no. I, I wrote that in like 20 minutes, and it's not the best, but I tried. It was pretty good it for 20 minutes. It was fantastic. As your writing always is, huh? Give yourself some credit where it's due. Ah, uh, bunk. Deal with it. Ah, intense internal screaming. <laughs> well, thanks yes. everybody for joining the stream. I am ready to continue <laughs> if you guys are. Uh, yes, I, I'm totally okay with continuing if you guys want to. Well then, right. let's go. Here we go. Huh? Let's go. Yes. Come on. Set the scene, Kyra. Uh, I believe you guys were currently talking and forcefully grilling... Uh, uh, our poor, sweet, innocent uh, Lavramon, who has done nothing wrong at all, and is totally innocent of anything you might accuse him of, and Can is we... currently just kind of sitting down with his staff between his in his hands on his lap, and doing his best to answer your questions. I think one of the bit, like only things that Riv said was, "Yay, he's telling his friends." Mm -hmm. I think he said that, and it's it's actually kind of obvious. <laughs> If I recall, well, the obvious correctly. portion, it, like, yeah, but he's just happy <laughs> that he's actually telling his friends now. We're roasting the poor child. He's not a child. He is older than all of you combined. I know we're roasting him still, and I feel actually kind of bad. But I didn't. Speaking of which, Jace is going to look up Don't at Titus. Teach my hamster to suck eggs. After hamsters are done sucking eggs. So true. <laughs> And be like, Titus, I've got a really important question. What's up? It sounds like you and the others were around before Ash here. He nods. So this whole we're stuck here on a node that is like doomed and all that. Uh, were we the only Digimon here at the time or were there more? I will allow that influence. Uh, do you mean, was there more Digimon before this node was cut off? Yeah, because you said that you all came here to fight that thing, right? He nods. So what were yeah. Digimon like before that? I did not have a chance to visit here often. I was usually busy attending to my work, going where I was most needed in order to help those who needed it. I will say, however, for those that I met when I came here to fight, we fought for at least almost a year, I would say. And 
they were perhaps the bravest, most noble Digimon I've ever had the pleasure to fight besides. Alright, follow-up question. Was there no evacuation? There was. Yes. The ones who remained here were the ones who chose to stay in order to ensure that the release of the data killer was not stopped. They knowingly chose to stay here to fight with me and my brothers. Alright. Uh, hey, Ash. He nods. Uh, can you stop with the child thing? I don't want to talk down to you when you're older than me. Can you, like, uh, take whatever you are now and, like, keep, actually keep, stand with us here? He pauses for a moment, looking kind of nervous before nodding. And he will stand up and... He will become much taller. He, he is about as tall as you are, Jace. Maybe a little bit more. And his body is much more... Before he was very, like, lanky and such. Now he's much... Not muscular, but he's definitely filled out. Toned. Yes. Toned. And uh, he, he, he looks to be, like... If you put him in, like, human years, he'd probably look almost, like, mid-20s. Hey, right, perfect. I still feel old. All right. Uh, he, he looks... He actually looks almost identical to what Nemo looked like. All right. So. Do you want to be friends with us? He nods. I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody here, but... I can tell you that lying, manipulating, pretending to be something you're not is not going to make friends with us. If you look around, honesty is the best policy. We all know each other. And the reason why even Magna is still here is because I know Magna's trying his best to do what's right, even though he's an idiot sometimes and jumps the gun and doesn't know how to hold his cards to his chest. Oh, fuck, Spectre's not here. I keep, keep on forgetting to go get him. Look, if you want to be your friend, this lying and manipulation stuff doesn't make friends. It makes you an asshole. And part of being a friend is telling your friends when they're being assholes. I could go around this room and tell everybody what they're being idiots about, and they would respect that and listen. You don't have that right right now with us. I hope you understand. But if you want to be your friend, I'm going to tell you, you're being an asshole. It's just, he kind of glances down like he's trying to think of the words. I mean, you've seen some of the Digimon here. I just, it's habits. It's like what I had to do, and it's just what I'm always used to doing. Well, it sounds like to me that at least at one point in time, every Digimon here was willing to give up their lives to protect others. So I'm wondering if there's more to go on, but before we go on with that, I've got a question for you. You said Demi raised you, right? Mm-hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, Titus, uh, Demi was one of you guys, right? Titus nods. Have you ever seen what it's like for those of us not them? Stood on our level? Once? Or have you always been privileged? Above us. Stronger. Ty, Ty shakes his head. I... I was... Not like this for... Many years of my life. I, I fought and struggled to survive. Not, when I was younger. Not you. Ash. Ash kind of pauses. Um... He, I, I wanted to stay with him. I was able to have a normal life with him. It was just going out and picking berries or we would do little performances and it was really peaceful and nice. 
and then things started to get worse and worse and eventually he said that I needed to start my journey the first time. So you grew up with Demi, somebody who was very powerful and didn't have to struggle to survive. Understood. And I've got one follow-up question. If all the Digimon here at one point in time were willing to sacrifice their lives to try and protect others, are we really that terrible? Is that really us out there or something else affecting us? I... I have I'm, something to bring up. I'm not sure. I've... I wasn't around when Titus talks about this. This is just, even for me and how old I might be, Titus is older than I am. I wasn't around when all this happened, so I never knew those Digimon. But maybe something happened. If This world was supposed to apparently die, but it didn't. So maybe it has something to do with that. One way or the other. Magna, go ahead. I don't mean to take up all your guys' time. It's just... It's hard not to... I don't... There's something we're missing. That's disgusting out there. But if these Digimon out... were once heroes that were willing to sacrifice themselves, then something is wrong. And I hate... Go ahead, Magna. I'll say what I have to say afterwards. Speak. I... Just go. I've already talked to you about what we've been through, Ash. I don't... Jace has already been talking to you about it. I've already told you about what we've been through. You know what I've been through because I told you for some reason. I've seen what the others have to go through what they've gone through before you decided to help and everything like that i still know that there's good out there no matter what and yet you're still over here hiding away essentially pushing part of yourself to help while the rest of you just explores the world pushing away the responsibility you need to suck it up this world most of us will agree the world's never fair. You have to learn how to adapt and understand how people will react, even if you don't think it's what you think it is going to be. I've had to learn this the hard way. The only thing that I was able to maintain throughout this world was that it's better to stay with friends than just keep making enemies. I don't care what the others will say, but I prefer them over being in my old village. I have to put it out there, Ash, that you may think future you has control of the situation, but I don't like Holru even this time, and if he really is your secret agent, I gotta ask you why he still has still living Digimon suffering on his walls if that trend is over. I don't think you quite understand that something is missing, and I think it's affecting them too. And I think you're going to lose control and it's going to bite you in the ass. Speaking of which, can we go get Spectre? Really quickly. Uh, I, I can... Oh, you, oh, you all are having such a good moment. I, I, can, I can help if you want. Please do. Send him a message or something on how to get here. He's going to... Take a moment, take a breath, and open the door before stepping out and considering you guys are right next to a lake and a large source of water he's going to lift his staff up and swipe it as the water from the lake will rise up start to swirl and spin before forming into what looks to be a gate that leads to the house that you guys are currently sitting in <clears throat> Just please hurry. I can't hold this for very long. Brioche, do you want to grab this one or do you want me to?
Go ahead. All right. Sorry for taking the floor, guys. He's going to go ahead and go through the gate. Shout Spectre. Okay. Is Spectre there? At the house? Probably. Oh, that's why I'm asking Kerr. Uh, yeah, I would assume he'd probably be at the house. It's, okay. It's only been like a day, so you'd probably be hanging oh. out there. Just making sure that no, you know, shenanigans happen. Can nah, I'm not going to be that evil. The war. Uh, Spectre, he kind of like, I assume this portal's outside? Yes. He like Basically, peeks out of a window a little... and he sees the he sees the little portal and he just shouts, What? Bullshit happened, come on, serious talk. I want you here. It's already progressed, so you might be clueless, but come on. You could just hear Spectre. Like nobody can hear it, but they can still just feel him cursing. <laughs> as he uh as uh, some like tip taps are heard as his claws are like hitting on the floor and eventually the front door opens and he comes out. <sighs> what have you all gotten up to this time? Ash is the high king. I'm grilling him. Yeah, yeah. well, I saw that one coming. What else is new? Well, he it's happening now. Portal. Following him out. I would have gotten you earlier, but I got distracted. I, I I had to light the fire and ask questions. By the way, uh Spectre, this is a uh, Titan. The only person so far to not only ask consent, but uh accept a no. Um he asked Asher if he could uh take some blood for his health issues. He said no. He said he'd do other ways. Asher said no, and he respected that. So And he gave you this real neat gun. Oh yeah, he's giving out like power armor and stuff. That's why I'm in this like suit of armor here. Um, Spectre just he look he looks at he looks at him curiously, but he neither like smiles or frowns. He just he's neutral at him. The Gralmon will give a small wave to you, Spectre. Y oh, you, also. You you do know what a Gralmon is, as that's what Jace evolves into. Oh. Bare minimum hit. Oh no, and it's a simp for me. Oh no. I mean, I don't know, but I can imagine. Alright, let me so, catch you. Alright. Yeah. But I I I've just I Kurt, have I discovered anything in my time away? We don't what have to go over been... it now, but like, have I? Because my character's been studying like this whole time. What would you have been trying to research specifically? A uh, world study? history, uh, characters, connections, just finding patterns. Yes, yes, you would have been able to find out about all the leaders, about all the different cities, their cultures, what they're like. Um, you would have been able to find out quite a lot. Okay. Well, I've been able to figure out some things on my end, but. Sounds like these things are a little bit more important. All right. Priorities, what, what's most important right now? You, High King is Ash, you said? Yeah, High King's Ash. Uh, long story short, I've been grilling on him why he's been kind of an asshole. And uh, he knows about the future thanks to Magna. Uh, so does Titus and Gar here. Um, expressly stated that no we're not okay with an entire war happening just so we go back in time and be good people wait wait what are you talking about going back in time to be good people well they kind of seem convinced that it's a closed loop so they need to make sure that everything happens so we get back so they want to make sure that the war happens and I told them that that was done yeah cause the whole ruined Demi seemed to be kind of uh, pally with Asher here Ash, and he seems pretty set that they wouldn't, uh, you know, be the <clears throat> pricks they are in our time, you know? Yeah, also, I think Demi raised Ash. Yeah, Demi raised Ash. I don't think Ash is completely visible to the atrocities going on. I think he's gotten complacent, maybe? I'm saying this Not right in front of Ash. As Ash is kind of raised, Ash is just kind of flopped back onto the ground after he let the portal just collapse. Looking like just tired, and just like raises a hand. I would say more done with everything, numb. 
Understandably so, but it seems like there might have been a time before this where every Digimon that lives now might have once tried to sacrifice themselves to protect others, so there might be more to this. Well, there's one thing I know from all of our adventures is that people and their inner behaviors don't tend to change very easily. But he, he points over at Ash. War's bad. Stop that. To everyone else, or he actually points over at Magna. Yes. Stop giving out information. All right. Roger. What is our priority right now? I don't even know at this point in time. I know me and Asher had plans of blowing up Holder's uh, home base, free of those uh, tortured Digimon, and mm. kind of give him a little kick to the balls in the process. Uh, Asher, you still uh, up for that? I'm still am. Also, I want to teach this human a little how to use more explosives. Is this folder blocked? Is, but is that uh, really priority right now? Guys, I don't remember exactly when, but didn't you guys mention having a meeting that you had to go to? Yeah, and possibly same location. Nice with the yeah. potato thing? Because I wasn't I wasn't there when you set that up, because I was talking with Ash about things, but uh, you had a potato thing, right? Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> we were going to make a lot of bank off of <laughs> some suckers. Wait, wait. <laughs> Explosions. Yeah. Who taught who what? Oh, right. Uh, this is the human. Uh, he's a little freedom fighter. Me and Asher uh, might have taught him how to make explosives to free other slaves. Uh, Percy uh... kind of perks up. He He's currently been just kind of like flopped against the wall looking exhausted. But when he hears that, he gives a little wave to Spectre. He looks like he's like 14 or 15. It's fine. Uh... Everything's fine. Hello. Trust us. Definitely Spectre, fine. he's just... He's just holding his paw to his face, and he's just, like, rubbing at the corner of his eye. Yeah, I wanted to tell you this other ways, but, you know, bullshit all hits the fan at once, right, Spectre? Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it does. Just well, but, wrap I mean, arm around your shoulder. That's, that's what the potato thing was for. It was so we could do this without violence. Now they're going to be aware... Well, they don't know we taught the human how to make explosives, and they don't need to know that we taught him how to make more explosives. No, but it doesn't take a leap of logic to know that, hey, newcomers come in, explosions are happening, connection? Though I don't know if these folks uh, are that close-minded. Uh, well, I guess we'll just have to find out. The cat's out of the bag already. I mean, kind of, sort of. After all, Ash is here. This guy's here. Listen, listen, listen. Whenever it comes to these sorts of things, you just gotta deny, deny, deny. You know? Well, I mean, before you discuss that kind of stuff, you also might want to make sure that them and Gar are on board with it. You... Ash and um, Perseus? Well, no, I mean, like, because, you know, we you're, you're talking about keeping information secret, but we kind of have a lot of people here. All right, there's uh, that one and that one. Also, don't forget about Gar. Gar's here, too. Yeah, Gar's been Gar here the whole time. Gar is currently hugging Magna gently. Uh, Magna I'm sure will be fine. hugging Gar. So, Kerr, I want to ask you, and my character's been studying for probably about a day or two, and what yes. specifically he's been looking for is a pattern to determine whether or not this world that they are currently in, that this this reality, this time, is real. Was he able to confirm or deny that? Uh, you were able to confirm. This world is very much real. Um, what it looks to be, th there's usually talks of disasters that happen about every hundred years or so. Something usually fairly bad happens, but usually uh saviors will end up showing up and putting it down before it can get too badly but around every thousand years give or take usually something really bad will appear and it is at this point where basically if they aren't careful or if something isn't done 
there has been moments where they've kind of get, gotten kicked in the teeth and knocked back a few uh a century or two in the terms of like technology and such that they've been able to develop okay um, um i guess spectre will he will convey this information to everyone else and he will he will simply say like all right so all of that aside this historical moment we're in right now it's the real deal i uh, didn't really think it might be but it is to, to go along with that as well specter uh some of the things that the books did talk about sounded mm -hmm. very much like what uh vortigern and also what um a certain lightning dog looked like that you saw back in the present that you faced off against. Well, oh, the the two calamities? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They weren't they weren't named here, but from the descriptions of the time periods and what it looked like and what happened, it, you could identify each one each time they showed up. But there was sometimes in the thousand year arcs where a great calamity didn't seem to show up but a horrific disaster would usually befall the world in the form of the last one was not as extreme as a great calamity it was a couple hundred years ago during the locust war and mm -hmm. that was being led by a being that was able to control these these lesser proto X, as you guys kind of nicknamed them. And they, it was able to command and control them. And it was mm. using them to hunt down Digimon and just kill everything it came across. They were like locusts, just spreading out and destroying everything they came across before the High King and his armies were able to put it down and destroy it. Yep. Okay. Also, Kurt, just to remind you, Vargas was fire based. Oh, god dang it. Yeah, sorry. Vargas can use both fire and lightning. He only used fire when you guys saw yeah. him last. Look well, like, I mean, lightning is pretty hot, but it does tend to start fires. Is there any information that I learned that nobody else here has, like learned or knows? Um, for you, uh, you have full working knowledge of like the five capital the five major towns plus the capital so if you have questions you i would if you wanted to ask questions about them i would be able to supply you the information uh that's definitely information that none of the others have um if you want to know like cultural things between the different capitals i would be able to tell you that uh, and basic history and such, I would also be able to give you if you had questions about that. Basically, you have a you have a working historical and sociological uh, knowledge of the world to to function in it. Okay. Wow, I, I learned a lot in a day. You had a very What's good it? library to go off of. Yeah, that's fair. Probably had some good reference numbers. Also, you had I... servants whose whole job was just to help you. Fair. I guess we'll see how relevant that information comes. I mean, we do have Ash here, and they are the High King. I'm sure they probably know this world pretty good, too. He doesn't pay that much attention to the other towns. He's kind of doing his own thing. <laughs> that's fair. All right, that that's sorry to put a pause on everything. I just want to know if there was anything I knew or could supply to the group. Thank you. No, you're good. Uh, yeah, no, if you have any other questions, too, about, like, particular things, I would be... I am more than happy to answer those questions and give you information okay so she just has his arm around specter i do have a specific question that i've been waiting to ask for quite a long time but i think that this would be a good time to bring it up do it yes since the entire node is surrounded by data killer why is riff able to access the internet For reasons. <laughs> okay, because Riv can access the legitimate internet. Yes, I know. So I, f I feel like this is a this would be a good time to like at least pop the question and see if you'd answer as to why the hell. You don't know. 
Oh, great. <laughs> cool. <laughs> because this is, by the way, this has been a thing ever since, like, you know, when I was making Ribs think, I was asking Kerr what he could do. He could access the legitimate internet this entire time. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Concern, huh? It's a great way to learn. Yeah, it's just concerning now. I just thought it was normal before. <laughs> yeah, when you asked and I said yes, I was like, oh, this is going to be great when this comes up later. Yeah. So Jace will have an armor on Spectre and look at the rest of the group and goes, before I, like, you know, kind of finalize my whole little soapbox nonsense here, anybody want to say anything at all? Feel uh, free to call me an asshole. Do you mean in relation to this situation, or do you just mean in general? In this situation. Let's close out one situation, and then maybe deal with the human, and then we can do whatever else we need to. Because, okay, by I'll the wait. way... Question, Riv. The folder that's labeled uh, Bob making, that's is that password protected for me or just Magna? Oh, what? Oh, well, I mean, you know, it's uh, pretty much anyone can have that. I mean, when I checked, it was labeled as public domain, TM31210. Okay, good. Well, we're, we're going to write out a bunch of shit. A I'm anybody... sorry, I heard bomb making? Well, yeah, yeah TM32110. Or, or, sorry, uh, TM31210. Uh, yeah, perfect. See over there's free human. Yeah, I little, can't little... get over the fact. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, Percy's gonna live, raise a hand. Oh yeah, we uh, raided a farm, and uh, we were able to free a lot of the uh, humans there with the bombs and explosives that Jace taught me how to use, and then I taught them how to do it. Right. Good. Jace, did you happen to teach them how to farm or anything? Just you know, based Just... building. No, we we're, we're gonna have to cover that. We'll. That's why I wanted you here. Guerrilla tactics and, uh, you know, the other things. We'll get there. Uh, one situation at a time. Anybody want to say anything? Or just call me an asshole? Rioch, Asher, Charles? No. Everything oh. sounds good. I just want to say well. again, reestablish that my life was threatened and put into great jeopardy. Yep. You're Asher. a great dad, Jace. Oh, thank you. Um, hey, hey, Ash. Any questions before I do the whole "I'm going to be your friend now" thing? Ash is going to get up and walk over to Charles. Charles flinches. He will slowly hold out a hand to you, Charles. Uh, I don't know if I uh, have any coins on me. Let me just. Uh... I I think he's offering to shake hands, Charles. Make amends. Oh, oh yeah, yeah no, I I knew that. <laughs> doing a classic joke. And so Charles will hesitantly uh, put his hands into ashes. Ash is going to give a gentle squeeze of his hand. I'm sorry for how I treated you. That was unfair of me. I let my own bias get in the way and I hurt you for it. Oh, it's all right. You know, it's uh, only natural, I suppose, when you're around these uh, sociopaths and all. Thank you, though. <laughs> He'll nod and take a step back. All right. You ready to be friends? He'll nod. Cool. You can't fix anything by force. You don't know what it's like to be with us. We've heard it in the future and we've heard it now. You don't even consider yourself one of us. How do you expect to be able to fix our problems if you're not one of us? You're either going to choose to be one of us and walk with us, or you're going to choose to be asshole and try to control us. I don't want to do that. Are you one of us? A hint to he you. Nods. Uh, it, it doesn't work that way. Huh? Oh, oh, him trying to control us. Oh, yeah. So I, I want to be friends. Then what are you? One of you. And we are? 
like me. Looking for a key phrase here. Asher is a Digimon. Charles is a Digimon. I'm a Digimon. What are you? I'm a Digimon. An idiot sandwich. That too. You either walk with us or you walk above us. And it sounds like this entire time you've thought you're better than us. You're not. Walk with us. He'll nod his yeah. head slowly. Enjoy this idiot to... sandwich, puts bread on Magna's head. Go ahead, Magna. Hey! Man, does this mean I have to give up on killing Horu and Demi? No, we just have to kick them in the balls several times. Can we... I do that, like, a couple times? Because I kind of promised that I would kill them both when they possessed Carlos. And I was really pissed off about that because he's my brother and everything. But they're not absolved of their sins yet. We have no nothing to prove that they're not currently betraying the High King. And we have nothing to prove that whatever corruption is affecting them isn't... And Ash writes down... <laughs> they they yeah. very well maybe bad people still. It's that it, we don't know. I mean, there's the one issue of just if by any chance um, they never betrayed the High King, but instead they ask him to take us into the past in order to do something. What happens then? They might have just been following orders or stuff. <clears throat> We still slap them for, you know, perpetrating a war. That caused a whole lot of suffering. But does this mean I have to apologize to Horu for stabbing him in the leg and making it... No, decay? do it again. He's still forcing a war. I really hope for everyone's sake that it's a closed... That's, a, that's an open loop and not a closed loop. I hope for everybody's sake that it, if it is a closed loop... The war really is Nash's fault, and this wasn't a plan. I really oh, yeah, that's true. But remember the future? I got told that I got blamed for it, so. Wait. But. Magna's gonna look at Gar. And then look straight back at Jace and is like. But if it happens, that means. Yeah, I really want to slap him right now. Can we not think about it? <laughs> eh, it's best we just don't think about it. We just best we put our minds in the present and presently me and specter have uh, some business to attend to arranged with holo so you know maybe don't go uh, ball slapping just yet oh I yeah that's why i asked for permission to try and threaten people afterwards oh yes gar, gar just looks very innocently confused you don't want to know gar the ghoul of scumamon will nod his head slowly All right, so that's stage one. Uh, stage two, potato things and uh, probably whatever Riv has to deal with and uh, me teaching humans how to do very, very explosive things. And I don't do something stupid because I'm probably just going to stick with Gar unless y'all need me for right now just to make sure nothing stupid happens. As a voice speaks out slowly in the distance, let's not ask for your miracles, Magna. I will kill that voice myself. I have a <laughs> knife. I'm not afraid to make your leg disappear. Uh, so which subject should we ta tackle first? Well, maybe trying to figure out what kind of a loop we're in might be a good, good call first. How? We're in the past. It's not like we could just dip to the future and... No, but I don't know. Just something, something just kind of feels off. When has it ever been on? No, it's it feels off more than more than usual. Like I, I know this world is real. I know we're we're stuck in the past, but there's just something. Um, I guess let's take care of this potato business first. I. 
I don't know what kind of influence we'll be able to exert here, but I suppose trying to at least make sure it's positive would be for the better. I mean, because if this is an open loop, maybe we can make the future a little bit brighter. He might be hard pressed to stop me and Asher from blowing up his house. If you're going to blow Some... up the house, invite me. I will bring the popcorn. Something tells me it probably wouldn't matter. Eh, we'll keep our lips shut about it, <laughs> as long as it's not attached to our art installation. We still need him to make it to the mountain. Yeah, but he does need his house full of artwork of suffering. Just Can I burn that? Let 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 me try to deal with that. Okay. A oh resplendent boy. offering. Brian Wolf tipped fifty dollars. The voice will die. Mwaha ha 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 razim evil razim evil razim evil. Brian, thank you so much for that tip. Oh, right, we got a tip earlier. Um, well, we are still not quite done with the tip goal. Yeah, we're five, five dollars away. Sorry, I've been forbade from tipping for the time being. Yep. I have been threatened if I do. And it's Who threatened you? Asher Who opening threatened his me? mouth and wahaha. Oh boy. Mahaha. Mahaha. Uh, Zim threatened me. <laughs> Why is it? Because my credit card started gaining interest and it's what I used to fix my house and it's at $14,000. Oh. Oh. Truly, this is the dankest dungeon. Oh, thanks, Gimon. Thank you, Gimon. Gimon, good boy. <laughs> Gimon, I know. Carcerous. <laughs> Thank you all <laughs> for the watching. tips. <laughs> that is the tip goal fully completed, everyone. <laughs> Truly, this Jesus. is the dankest dungeon. Because everybody to rushes to pay it. I'm still yep. doing things. We're doing the thing! Woo! Perfect. By the way, on an aside, you know TM31210 is an absolute banger when the first set of instructions in it is how to make plastic explosives. <laughs> That's <laughs> mm, and yummy. It's okay, this Chase will be copying down all of that stuff, including <laughs> how to use fertilizer properly, and I'm not going to say any more because we will get banned from YouTube if I do. Oh, did you actually look up uh, TM thirty one two ten? I've read the uh, the the what I am cookbook. Oh book. yeah. Uh, so TM thirty one two ten is even better than that. I'm just gonna throw it in the DRS chat. I I know what it is. is the dankest. Right. Thank you oh, for the right. tip as well. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, thank you for that one. Love you. Mwah. I forgot I about the TM. Raijin is a good artist. I forgot about the TM. Raijin. I, I know what it is. I just didn't want to say it openly on stream. Why not? It's public domain. Because YouTube. I yeah, forgot this about this. I mean, uh, technically people, uh, you know, people can't say the, the word. You got to say unlive now. You got a Fortnite Royale on people. Yeah. Yeah. You have to game end in, in Fortnite. Game yeah, in you, Fortnite. you can't bring in, up in Fortnite in Minecraft without losing. I, I can't say certain. I have to be careful because I know what, what YouTube will ban. Mm. That's why I'm dancing around it. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Like Magna and Gar place their Minecraft beds next to each other. Right. See, that's a good example. Now, that's I perfectly will... fine. YouTube doesn't care about that. YouTube cares about... I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I will... Uh, Don't get me started. Wonder how much. wonder how much Gar enjoyed that Sailor Moon cosplay. Hey! So, he hasn't seen it yet. He will. Spectre, oh, your fuck. potato idea. Yes. What of it? Floor is yours. This is your... This is you. You're leading this one. Ah, uh, you know, also a joint partner here, uh, 
Well, well I mean, is it is it time for us to actually go to that meeting? Yeah, uh, getting close. Okay. Then I, I guess we'll 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 begin to head down over there, or at least Spectre um will let everyone know that. And he'll kind of let people know that um, that the whole point of the potato thing is one to build influence, two to change perceptions, and three well, to hopefully figure out maybe a little bit more information of what's going on. Now we can't do that if there's explosions. We can't do that if we're stabbing people, and we certainly can't do that if people are dying. Well, we were going to wait until we were leaving town to do it, so you got time. I mean, that's fair. In the meantime, yeah. I've got a little freedom fighter to help. Uh, I'm going to hang back here. Oh, uh, Titus, do you got yes. fancy armor for that one? Points at Spectre. He looks at Spectre for a few moments, looks him up and down before smiling. I think what? I can make something work. Give me a moment. As you see him vanish back into uh, his little domain he has. I, I don't know if I want anything. Thank you. Give him a knife. Yeah, make sure he has a really big knife and he'll be happy. Also, yes. Spectre, if you get something that I could share all my information with you. Like expect- what kind of information? Oh, I, I just share all of it. And then you can look it up. Uh, I mean, what? Why? Why do you all want stuff so bad? I've been told it will let me kick even his ass points at or points at Ash. I don't really I, care I to have all know. this, but I don't know. I just I like being able to share information with you. Well, you could do that without me having to take the armor, right? Well, no, but if you take, like, the helmet, at least. And Ash kind of pauses and looks Jace up and down for a moment. One-on-one? Think I could pull it off? It'd be really freaking hard, and I don't want to be close to you. I feel like if I'm close to you, I'm going to have a very bad day. And At least put it in a pack, Spectre. If we're going to have to be fighting likes of Holru and stuff like that, this is an edge, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah again. We, we've been given edges before, and they've turned out to be dull. Yeah, you're right. Maybe you're right. I mean, it's it's got absolutely nothing to do with you, and he, he looks at the individual, or if they're even still here. I, I just slipped out of the room to start getting things. Okay. Yeah, he says, like, it's got nothing to do with you. It's just... I've been burned way more times than I think I care to mention at this point. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm, Maybe I'm just being blinded by the fact that somebody accepted the word no and consent. And first time in a long time I've heard somebody actually respect a no. I just is right, a really then, good guy. You said that let, about me, let me ask the, yeah, then let me ask the crew here. Why do you all trust this? What What's the feeling you're getting here? Uh, I just uh, accepted it because uh, Jace did. Well, there's got to be a reason. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a reason that you know, but there's got to be something for why you, you've accepted this. This... This doesn't seem quite like, like in character for for any of us for for no reason. I mean, oh, I be like fair. him because he's from before uh, the node got cut off, so he knows a lot of things about a lot of places. Well, I mean, to be fair, it is kind of cool on Jace. Yeah, and as I said, and he he's the first person we've met in a long time that actually respected Ash or saying no, so. That's an immediate improvement over a lot of people. And Spectre kind of like looks at the ground and he kicks his feet. All right. All right. I, I trust your judgment, Chase. I'll, 
I'll accept it. You don't have to. Magna, what do you think? Charles, Brioche? Yeah? Uh, you know, it's uh, admittedly kind of hard to put your full trust into anybody, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I do like the gun a lot. I feel like Charles is just slowly stroking the gun like one would a cat or a dog. And some loving pets, yes. Charles, I, I love you to death, but I know you're you're motivated by things. Same with, same with um, Magna. Same with everyone else here. But Jace, you're not. That's why. That's why I'm willing to trust this. I Grant, feel like I'm just be him. looking for a good guy for once. And he is technically my same species. And I may or may not have been simping over him until he said some crazy shit. I mean, did you see that six pack? Look at that six pack. It was pretty great. Spectre he was just fairly ripped. Spectre. All right. Let's see. A challenge, but one I was up for as he comes walking over and sets down a little disc. This will create a frame of armor, just like his, as he points to Jace. By the way, blue and gold look very nice on you. You you said that. I kind of like know. my background, but this will do. And as for weapon, they said dagger. So, um, I, yeah, I suppose. I have a few possibilities, depending on what you're more partial to. So we have, as he lifts up a weapon and he, it looks like a dagger size for something about you. It, it's maybe a tiny bit larger than what you would expect a knife to be, but it, it's in the ballpark. Mm. Uh, for, for him, it's definitely a knife. For you, maybe a slightly smaller short sword, but it's he's trying. Okay. So for this one, as he thumbs a button on it and the blade begins to crackle with energy, we have uh, this as he walks over, picks up an apple, and the blade just goes through it like a hot knife through butter. Classic. Uh, this will basically just dis disrupt any digital field that it goes through. Makes cutting through almost anything pretty easily. Uh, even if the power runs out on the weapon, it will still be able to cut, like, probably one of the best knives you've probably ever used. Um, I actually got no problem getting through things myself. How sturdy is it? Um, sturdy? He... He walks over, sets it down. Charles, take a shot. Yeah. Also, uh, is this more like a dirk form? Uh, it, it would be more like, it, it's like a dagger, but for someone of Spectre's size, it's closer to like a short sword. Yeah, well, that's why I'm asking, because the dirk is the middle ground yes. between a dagger and a short sword. It's, it's like... It's shaped like a sword a bit, but it's generally a bit too short to be considered a short sword, and it's like a thrusting thing generally, but the edges are sharpened. Uh, mm. No, M more it is an actual dagger. It's just size for someone bigger than Spectre. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just giving a description of a dirk. Okay. I'm just yeah. saying like the size is more of like a dirk. Yes. Um, But but yeah, um, it, it, so it sounds very good. But yeah, I've actually got no problem kidding people. He nods. So it, it's not necessarily just the hitting, but from the sounds of what There's your all. friends we are saying. Right now. And we. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Good, Chris Offs. So from, from the sounds of it, it's not the matter of hitting something that's your problem. It's the matter of say, I'm assuming you, you might have a problem with, say, something like Holru's armor, or something a bit thicker or harder. No, I 
I can get through that stuff. He nods. He he is now looking more at Spectre like, okay, I am already sizing him up. I want him now. He sounds <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, and just and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I one of my one of my powers is it, called the Sparking Knife. It can bypass barriers and it can bypass accuracy. I assume armor's a barrier. So that's uh, armor is not this. a barrier. That's armor's for things like barrier. protect moves and shields. Okay. Like if they if they were to like put up like a protect shield or something, where like they they put up like, let's say Nemo threw up a barrier of of water, uh, okay. to like act as like you know a blocker, it would be able to pierce through that no problem. Ooh. Mm. Um. Then I'll I I'll go ahead and I can retract what I said. Then I assumed armor was part of that. He he he's yeah. still looking at Spectre like, oh my god, I want him now. I can, yeah. I can I can make this work. Yeah, my my issue has always been that the knives I have and he he draws out and even though he doesn't like necessarily display any knives on his person, he's just like kind of like taking one, two, three, four out. Like these are good, but they're just not sturdy. They they break. They're not strong. Also, you know, if you look at DRS, I'd put some images of Dirks. Oh, no. He nods. Th this will be able to handle most things, especially here. I doubt very little outside of, say, a Great Calamity's direct attack would be able to even try to damage it. And that's only if, say, like, it was directly on the ground and got a point-blank blast, which even our armor would struggle to survive against. That's... yeah, that's... that's pretty sturdy. The, these, that means... These things... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. These, these things are meant to... These things are meant to survive even the most aggressive climates that we might travel to. You can you can tell that Spectre's definitely tempted. He's like he's eyeing it. He's just like, uh, all right, I'll I'll give it a shot. These weapons are, as he holds out the knife, will also allow you to <clears throat> will also give you an advantage against more heavily armored beings to pierce their uh, protections. Okay. Yeah, that that was a that was a layer that I was missing. I can I can get through shields just fine, but armor on the other hand. And he he ta he takes a knife and he and there's almost like there's almost like a shift. Like from when he was holding the other knives to son to holding this one, there's a definite shift. As if suddenly he was like wielding a rock and now he's holding a feather. You can tell that he's a little taken aback by the balance of the weapon, and he he flourishes it. He he passes it back and forth between his hands, and and the the crew the crew actually gets to see him flourish the weapon in a way that they had not seen him flourish it before. I just want That's to say, high quality. Right. Titus just smiles. Oh yes, only the highest. And in the back of Titus's head, he is already filling out the adoption papers. Did I reincarnate then... from this? Please tell me I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then with a final flourish, he kind of like puts it away in, into his like hidden sheath and it just kind of disappears a little bit from view. Now this... Then... Thank okay. you. I, I have had quite a few years to make spares and extras in my time as he holds out the little disc this will craft a set of what we call power armor it as he waves a hand to jace who is currently wearing his and as he is as well this is
animal. Sorry, brain. Uh, this will even the odds when you are facing a being outside of your evolution. Even okay. you may struggle against a being on Holru's level, but where a rookie such as yourself might normally not stand a ghost of a chance with that, you stand a chance of actually not only even being able to harm him, but also to win the fight as well. It may be difficult, but the ability is there. It just depends on your skill and your ability to use it. I don't think my skill is going to be the issue here. If it he can smiles. take a hit, then that's all that is needed. <clears throat> uh, allow me to demonstrate. Charles, could you step out with me for a moment? I wish to do a demonstration. <clears throat> Duke. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. I suppose I could. <laughs> Please, everyone. Charles, if you could... Uh, there's a tree right over there. Could you take aim at it and fire? Well, I suppose I could. Uh, any particular mark or just kind of firing at it? Just one, just one round. All right, then. <laughs> Charles lifts up the gun. Uh, the Wait, sniper. there's a barn in the tree. Don't fire, Charles. <laughs> oh. Charles, it's too late. I've already set my sights. <laughs> Charles, you shoot that, Martin. I'm going to break your kneecaps before anyone else can. Uh, he's, he's... Oh, I'm no, you have to be pretty armor. fast to outdo Ad, Ash. I, I, think I think it's a little late. I, 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 I think you should all calm down because the Ash or the, the Martin is obviously in a kennel, not in a tree. Oh, uh, he's calmed down, yeah. Magnus going to put the knife away All right. All right. so Charles wields his rifle looks down the scope kind of feels the weight of it in his hands a little closes one yeah. eye takes a deep breath and then he shoots Cherrymon he takes a shot shoots at the tree Roll for initiative. All right, Gosh, darn, I was muted. <laughs> okay. Charles is about to die. Oh no. One second, one sec. Charles should not have been given a gun. Uh, this will change the trajectory of his character forever. Yes, we're about to have a major character development called a character death. <laughs> Is everyone ready? <laughs> So how was your guys' day? Uh, it's been all right so far. I've been suffering a little bit of a little, uh, inflammation in the wrist and the uh, ankle, I think. Wow. So kind of, a lot of joint stiffness. All right. You should can, stop being I can hear you guys. So much with your feet. Okay. Welcome back. Hello. Sorry, my, my headphones stopped working for a second. Duke. Uh, all right, so when you pull the tr when you pull the trigger, Charles, there's a loud boom, and for you, it is power, pure power. <laughs> oh shoot, you're going a little crazy. 
<laughs> I, for you, when the round hits the tree, one moment you, you guys just hear a boom, and the next, the tree explodes. Oh. <laughs> it's literally just explodes, basically. The whole thing? Uh, pretty much. 50 cal. Everything, everything around where you hit. And then most of the rest of the tree just looked like it got turned into shrapnel. 50 cal. Yeah. It was almost like someone, like, shh threw a grenade into the tree and watched it explode. <laughs> now, as he walks over, away from you guys, Charles, if you would... Nuclear launch detected. Oh, I know what you're saying there, Titus. <laughs> as, he, as he lifts both of his arms up, uh, where do you want it? Where do you want it? Where do you want it? Directly at me. Oh, I was meant a body part, but you know, I think we'll go for the heart. As his as his helmet comes down over his head. Charles takes aim right over the the right peck, you know. He takes he takes aim, takes a look at the scope, steadies himself, deep breath, and pulls the trigger. And goes yeah. for the money shot. As you fire, he doesn't try to dodge or get out of the way because he wants to demonstrate. It hits, and it looks like basically a giant explosion just went off. Uh, he gets tossed back a few feet into the ground, but you hear movement through the uh, the sound of... Uh, da, 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 da. You you hear movement through the smoke and dust that had been tossed up, and he comes walking out. You can see a rivet in his armor where he was hit. The paint and such is completely gone. You can see the metal underneath, and there is damage to the armor. If we, if we, but if we, but if that type of round had hit a Digimon, the Digimon would not be there anymore. They would be red mist at best. And he just has a chink in his armor at the moment, which he could probably fix. Also, I just feel the need to say that my mix suddenly brought up you got that, and uh, the beat dropped just as he, like, you know, got back up and went back mm -hmm. forward. <laughs> which is just how I'm imagining certain party members reacting. I thought a demonstration of what the armor can do and take might be better than just words. Spectre is impressed. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. He He's impressed. Just... And you gave Charles that? <laughs> Just goes, is it bad that I kind of want to get shot now? Oh, oh I could. No, it's, it's only take a second. No, we're, we're not shooting each other. We're not shooting each other. All right. I'm sold. He nods and leads everyone back inside. And he hands you the little disc. Just place that against your chest. And it will form into a similar suit, similar to what Jace is wearing. And myself. What about, what about Magna's armor? Uh, similar to his as well. Dismissive. Spectre kind of just like, he holds the disc in his hand and he lets out a big sigh and says, all right, and puts it against his chest. It forms into a suit of gold armor with blue highlights along it just like theirs uh oh, and dude, as it forms over your body specter you can almost feel like it's interfacing into your body and once it's finished forming it doesn't feel like armor it feels like it is a part of your body you can move as easily as you could without it on 
it doesn't get in the way at all. In fact, like, you can feel the air against the metal. You can feel touching something. You can feel it as though you were touching it with your hands. And all you need to do is just think it. And you can form a helmet over you or cause the armor to do something. It will respond to your mental commands as though it was literally a part of your body. That's... That is tingly. Yeah, a little weird. Um, uh, you start getting a massive amount of information request pop-ups. <laughs> yes, you start getting pop -ups. free this Thursday at Burger King. What? No, it's information know. request pop-ups, not at <laughs> pop-ups. I don't know. This Burger King kind of sounds good. It's like yeah, brioche. It does. Brioche, did you run Burger King? Not quite. Oh. Hey, there's an ad for free King? money over there. You should click it. <laughs> all, jo all joking aside, what kind of informational pop-ups? Uh, it's basically just Riv sharing his massive banks of information with his team in order so that way you guys could, like, try and look up shit he knows in a compendium. Oh, it's probably several terabytes at this point. Oh, it's probably way more than that. All right, I'll just kind of, I'll just put that like over into the corner of my vision and just let that download for like the next few centuries. <laughs> I thank you. R uh, really, I mean it, and I'll I'll put this stuff to good use. He smiles. Just use it to try to protect those you care about, and to. Do what you can for those that you love. Spectre glances over at um who who has his team right now? Was it Jace? Was it Ash? Was it Asher? Oh no, it's Riv. Riv. Okay. Spectre Spectre glances over at Riv and looks back and just Yeah, I I, I can do that. Spectre, your armor also has the small image of a potato on the gauntlet. Great. Also, Again, it's, Asher... It's, it's, my, it's my seeing eye gauntlet. <laughs> also, Asher, a, uh, a box has appeared for you uh, of fresh berries. Uh, what are these? Also, Delivery uh, Raijin has struck. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm terrified. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Alphabetized by Mir. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love this. Oh my god, that's freaking amazing. Oh, Look at those that's chili adorable. berries. Wow. Don't worry, Riv, Riv is probably about to make a couple characters' heads spin. And hey, look, half of that is... Half of that is about Good. the data killer. To be fair, he's a he's actually probably going to do a lot of research into how like antimatter functions because he's going to equate a lot of how antimatter functions with probably how data killer would function, uh, like with uh, a, a digital substance. But yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. That that picture is amazing, though. Oh, it, that God, is I great. It. it is great. Now we know that Riv never turns on private browsing. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, look, if you're if you're getting to see all of his shit without like any problems, you're gonna have to get past his encryption or be given it willingly. And uh well, just a reminder for people, 
Rivermere's name is a mashup amalgamation of the people who made RSA encryption. Ooh. I'm also going to put out there that you just gave us open access to your internet browsing history. Yes. <laughs> no well, you see, that's that. the thing, Riv. You men, you know, he's got the best cipher in the world, I'm sure, but is the fatal flaw in his security is that he has to get he he can give it to other people. So, uh, it's basically open <laughs> to everyone. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, but the so, the problem the problem is is that he has asymmetric encryption, which is uh, two different linked keys. So he's giving you guys keys, but uh, due to that, it's not it, it's it's an asymmetric encryption method. I'm right, yeah. I'm not going to argue semantics tonight. Well, so, I, I know I'm uh, just putting it. Hey, Jace. Mm hmm. Percy slowly lifts a hand. Uh, Mr. Jace, I have a question. Yeah. Can I get something like that as he points to Charles's gun? Uh, aren't you trying to keep a low profile? The Spectre's shaking his head. Yeah, but I mean, that was really, really cool. It blew up a tire tree. I Charles mean, Charles has a big, dumb grin on his face. Slugs Charles in the shoulder. Keep the death, the, 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 keep that down a bit, buddy. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, uh, I don't think I have one your size. The recoil could cause you harm. I could see about maybe uh, making you one, but it may be a few years for the work necessary, plus the task that we have at hand. How about as, he we... looks at, as he looks at Jason, gives a little nod to him. Oh, good. Uh, how about we just stick to teaching you how to make your own stuff? That way you don't have to rely on Digimon. She'll nod slowly, I guess. I just... It was really, really cool. Hey, I mean, uh, this whole human liberation front, you know, if it needs some firepower, I, uh, you know, could assist, I suppose. <clears throat> he grins. All right. You know, um, um, you got work to do, Charles. Patsy on the back. Uh, so does Spectre. Anybody want to go with those two to their business meeting? I'm going to stay out of it because if I go, I'm probably going to stab Holdru like five times. I mean, uh, I guess I could come with you, but that would probably do the thing afterwards, but I, I don't think we're going to be done with the city, so I don't want to do that yet. I'm going to be teaching human Percy here. Oh, uh, sh should I should I mention my thing? Because I, I, I really want to ask Ash and Titus a question. Oh, I, I guess. Probably should. Well, yeah, so the, the, the data killer is just, like, completely surrounding the node, right? They nod. Oh, then why can I access the internet? So, the, have you have you ever heard silence before? Hello, darkness, my only friend. <laughs> I've come to talk with you again. I still really I, hate the song. <laughs> I, I, I just did. sorry. Go ahead. I, I just have to ask because silence is what greets you when you say that. Riv, pure total silence. And Titus looks like someone just stabbed him repeatedly. Could we use that to get guys, reinforcement you, from the other side? Do you th do you think I should repeat the question? I do they. What's the internet? Yeah, it looks like uh, you probably should uh, repeat the question because they don't seem to have uh, heard you exactly. Oh, okay. So, um, I, I I I sometimes look at the internet in order to look at more wikis to learn more things. But uh, you said that there's no data in or out, so I'm kind of confused. Is this a missing piece thing where you guys are just now realizing there might be a giant hole in the security that's supposed to keep us from them? Titus gives a very slow nod. So I'm assuming the internet, him having access is a bad thing. Titus gives a slow nod. Hey, Brioche, look. I think this is the hole. <laughs> I don't know what else to say that to, so I'm saying it to you. I'm sorry. You're fine. 
Uh, I'm <laughs> sure we could just patch it up. What, one moment. One moment, Titus says as he slowly walks into his workroom. The roar of pain and terror that you hear escape from that room, followed by the sounds that could only be uh, many walls crumbling, oh. is truly legendary. Integrity check. <laughs> before Chase, or before, uh, before Titus comes walking out, well, it appears I almost tripped and I put a hole in the wall that I'm going to have to fix. Oh, okay. Oh, so, um, because I know that I can interface, do you want me to show you? He nods quickly. All right. Time for Rib to navigate this shit for the first time in a long-ass time. Hell yeah. Oh god, you're doing it in the past, too. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, no. And is this when uh, Riv finds uh, Nim? Oh, no. <laughs> On the plus side, Kerr Kerr already told me it's an academics thing, so... Yes, this is. Oh, God. Because, uh, he's gonna have to navigate this shit. So while Riv rolls, I I just want to point out one minor thing. That this is a closed loop now, and now we know why the X become the X, and how all the horrible things begin happening. Nah, he did this stuff all the time. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> so, is everyone ready? No. Oh, sure, well, too bad. Not? That just means I'm going to roll right now. Minsk and Boo. You forgot Boo. The difficulty has been decreased for this roll. Uh, I don't have any sixes, so. I mean, if you guys want to be funny, you could do an increased crit. If you <laughs> increase critical, that'd be funny. Hmm. Yeah. It's too bad Woe's not here to burn all our dice and curse oh, him know, or something. Right? <laughs> just, just, like, continually curse. True. You know what? That's actually a positive thing, though. He can't say no to a good um what is it no to a good influence don't worry about that azure dragon it's perfectly fine but yeah i don't don't have any sixes so you might just want to refund that because there's no difficulty hey riv yeah. Could you give me an integrity check? Difficulty, uh, only nines or tens count? Oh! Uh, yeah, sure. Hmm. Also new, no, I do not refund them because, uh... They still technically were an available thing. They just didn't actually do anything. Oh, okay. Uh, also, I have a three. Is that enough? Barely. Yes. Exposed Barely is well. still a yes. There may be consequences, though. Oh. Well, let's use a soul real quick then. Sag. Oh well. So, Riv, when you try to dive into the internet, there's. You are able to. But as you do, you can feel there's something there. Something foul. And it's trying to get into you through this link that you've set up. This data that's trying to get in 
is to you, Riv, who basically prizes data and information, this is anathema to you. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, you, with the academics, though, you are able to shut down the connection before it's able to get worse. But you are able to get a little bit of information. If this sort of data, and it looks like it's naturally coming in in small doses, but over time, if a Digimon was exposed to it for long enough, it would probably start to corrupt them and turn them basically... In many ways, to you, it'd be insane or mad. So is this where the f uh, the fact that, like, when I made Riv, uh, I had one of his two starting traits be called self-scrubbing? Is that is that helping here? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. That's oh, yeah. the reason. That's the reason why I said three successes was barely enough. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so uh, he's 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 gonna kind of comment. Oh, that's a lot nastier than it was last time. But here, uh, and he's gonna he's gonna send over the data he got. Titus is just going to stare at this, and look very very scared and nervous. Yeah, normally normally it's not so nasty, but I guess uh, I guess it hasn't been cleaned up as much as it has in the in the future. So is this a memory leak? There's a hole. And I'm guessing it's being able to get it in very small doses. Not enough to manifest as anything. But enough that it is able to affect data. And make a bunch of people evil that wouldn't normally be evil. He nods. Trigger happy, crazy, wanting to do horrific things just for the hell of it. Hmm. Okay, so it's not a good thing that I can access the internet then. He shakes his head slowly. Oh, should I stop doing that? I, I've done that a lot. Should I stop doing that? Right now, yes. It's very unfortunate for you, Riv, you know, being the cause of uh, these sorts of things. I didn't cause this. It's uh, always been there. Maybe not the right word. Conduit? Is that is that correct? I'm not so good at that. Uh, reading st uh, stuff, you know. We set up the, the release tower near the core. If something's gone wrong there then we need to repair it or set up something that might be able... He looks at Riv. Could you craft something that might be able to filter any data that could come through that hole? Oh, I mean, maybe. I mean, I'd have to do a lot of stuff. Uh, probably, I mean, it, it'd be it'd be pretty hard because originally you'd have to do something like set up a whitelist for it instead of, uh, instead of a blacklist because it's a lot easier to only allow good things through if you whitelist it. But then again, it might be really hard to get approved data through if you don't have access to it and you set it to whitelist only because then you'd have to turn off all the defenses effectively in order to get any new data flow in. Jace holds up a hand. Yes, Jace? Isn't the core mandate of a dead god that was trying to protect us, but then the Digimon killed? He nods slowly, so I've heard. Wouldn't yes. it stand a reason, then, that this dead Digimon out of anger would just open up a hole itself? And then if you put it at the core of the world, and that's the core itself wants to die, that it might be doing this itself, and it might not be safe to go to the core anymore? And that tower might just be worthless. Just pausing a thought. No, that's definitely something to consider. And I, I would need to see the condition of the tower myself. And 
Ash, Ash, Ash also speaks up. Also, I do need the power of the core in order to try to send you guys back. I can't do that on my own. So it, when you guys eventually want to go home, I would need that in order to try to send you guys back. So what I'm getting is that you're saying you're needing our help. Uh, Titus just lets out a sigh and just rubs the back of his head. Look, I, I'm, I, I shoot things and I kill abominations. I don't deal with um, this sort of side of things as he looks at Riv. If there was a hole, could you maybe reinforce the data killer as well if we got you the supplies you needed in the time? Well, I mean, it depends on a lot. First, I'd have to actually have a, uh, you know, a stable sample of data killer. I need to inspect it to see if any new data killer actually meshes with the old or if it's considered a foreign substance and is subsequently, you know, eaten through properly. Uh, I mean, there, there's just a lot of stuff to do. Because I, I I don't think it'd be a good thing to introduce a foreign data killer that finds the other data killer as something that needs to be destroyed and then it eats at each other. That that doesn't sound good. But if we could do that for you, do you think you might be able to help out? Well, I mean, so long as so long as we have enough information, we could do basically anything. It's just you know figuring out the way to do it. I guess that's how I say. I'm not the smart guy usually. I usually just kill things that need to be killed. Okay, well, um, I know a lot of things, but I'm, like, not even a year old. I haven't had that much time to learn about everything. Although, I guess if you want to talk about chronologically, technically speaking, I'm, like, not negative 999 years old. I mean, give or take four years and, you know... Or two years in either direction. Ash also kind of looks like kind of hopeful at this. Wait, so if you, I, I I don't know the first thing about this, so there's nothing I can really do. But if you guys could maybe do something about this, maybe the Digimon won't be. Maybe they'll start turning out to be more like you than how they are right now. Well, I mean, you'd also have to figure out a way to filter out the, uh, you know, the the energy that you don't want that's already here. Because, you know, if it's here, it's just going to stay here if you're creating a completely closed system. So it won't actually improve anything. It'll just stop it from getting worse. So our goal now is to kill the data killer. <laughs> yeah, well, I was gonna try. I was gonna try and learn how to do that anyway, so that way, you know, when the world resets and it tries to wipe someone's, uh, wh whoever resets the core in order to fix things and fix the world, uh, it would try and wipe their data. But it would only do that if they were inside of the world. So I figured, hey, if uh, I found a way through the data killer, then we could take them outside of the world, like you know, a copy of their data, and then when we get back, we could, you know, uh, back up restore. So that way, no one dies. One way or the other, it sounds like uh, Spectre and Cheryl still have to do their potato thing and we're going to be here for a while, so we as might as well keep our lodgings in order. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, hey, Asher, we get to teach uh, human things. So why don't we do this? And I hate to say this. Let's uh, split up, gang. <laughs> oh, you really couldn't like do that. Around here? We, we really shouldn't do that. Uh, that's a bad idea. I've learned I from my Digivinder games that you should never split the group. I mean, you shouldn't, but we've got a lot of things to handle. It sounds like Riv needs to start data analyzing. Spectre and Charles are going to keep our lodging. You and I need to help the human. The human. Brioche and Charles, well, I, no, Brioche is free to join whichever group. If Magna keeps God busy. I mean, Gar keeps Magna busy, Magna keeps Gar busy, whichever way you want to put it. And or I can't be trusted it. around Holru, because I'll probably kill him. 
Do you really want to go back to Holru, Asher? No, that's fair. Have fun, you two! Don't do something I would do. I guess that's our uh, cue to leave, huh, Spectre? Yes, so. Uh, Ash is going to lift a hand. Uh, if you guys want, I can get you a uh, gate back to the house, and I can give you something to help you get back here if uh, we don't make it back before you guys finish. Sure, why not? You know, yeah, that he's walking. He will go outside and you see him make a little, it looks like a little star made of ice and hand it to Spectre. Just throw that down and smash it against the ground and it'll open a gate back here, uh, back to its source of water. So uh, it'll be really, it's really easy to use. And then he will lift his staff up. God damn it, this is going to be exhausting. Before thrusting it forward and... Uh, the water from the lake will rise up once again to start swirling into an open portal. Please hurry. This is really straining. All right. We'll go ahead and we'll take care of our stuff. We'll let you, we'll report back on what's going on. Come on, Charles. Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, Brios, did you want to come along or hang out with the, uh, the other groups and such? Yeah, I think I'll come along. Godspeed. Yeah, all right, then. All right, uh, Spectre, Charles, and Brioche, when you guys step on through, you guys are back at your home that you are currently staying at. And around you, you guys can see things are getting... Things are getting kind of busy. Uh, Digimon are kind of racing around right now. And there are no humans. <clears throat> uh, there are still some humans in town, but everyone is looking kind of nervous and worried, but they're keeping focus at the moment as they're kind of rushing about doing different jobs and such. Okay. Well, let's get prepared to the kitchen. Yeah, sure, yeah. We'll just start uh, making sculptures to show Holru then. Or... Uh we'll make we'll make a we'll make a couple, but I feel like in person demonstration is always better. We gotta put on a show. I hope you have practiced your showmanship, Charles. Oh, I'd say I'm pretty good at uh giving a little uh pizzazz as they call it. All right. So then. Let us have. Hmm. What would this be? Would this be. Hmm. For them making the sculptures? Yes. Craft. Uh, craft. Craft. Okay. Craft. Okay. There it is. There it is. I, I see it now. Knowledge. Let's let's have a craft roll. Okay. I suppose we each just yeah. try and make um, our own. I guess so. I'll yes. put mine in the body. Uh, cunning craft. Uh, Victor, are you wearing your armor? Kerr, so you are sounding really far away. Hello? Hello? He asked if Hello. you were in the armor. Are you wearing your um, armor when you do this? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I see uh, no reason to take it off. All right, so please add plus four dice to your roll. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, nine. What was this? D10s? Yes. Yep. Nine. I think it was, what What did I say, nine? Yes. No. I think that's a good roll. Five total? I think it's yeah, it is a, it, it's five. Oh. Well, because you have a one in there. Yeah, yeah, it, it takes one away. I'm guessing six and higher isn't isn't good enough. Uh, it's seven. seven and higher. Seven's is seven default. Gotcha. Yeah. If you have something that reduces difficulty, then it's sixes. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's gonna be a two for me as well. Alright, so Brioche and Charles, you guys are able to make some it's okay. Definitely for someone who's never seen this before, it'll be very nice. Um, for you, Spectre, as you are working, you can feel the auto senses in your armor working. And as you're working on carving and making this, you can feel like the armor is... Uh, have you ever had a car that uh, you can set it to like auto-adjust as you're driving? No. Okay, so it feels like almost the armor kind of adjusts and guides your hands. So it's letting you do even more detail work than you could normally do. It's just, it's not doing it for you. It's just enhancing what you're already able to do. It's helping you do more precise cuts. Yeah. Oh, yes. Gotcha. Yes, uh -huh. the, the armor basically, instead of like having the natural like shakiness a person's hand will always have the armor basically compensates for that to make it not happen so you can get like the perfect cuts and oh, work it's like on a parkinson this. spoon yeah okay yeah i could dig it yeah the, the the armor is just basically the tool that is enhancing your body to be able to do this even better and I, compared Compared hey, to what Charles and Brioche craft, yours is a work of wonder and beauty. And I'll go ahead and I'll describe some of the stuff that I make. Go ahead. With the simple potato. I craft a series of very delicate looking flowers that are you can obviously tell that they're they're not like the real deal but they still look like you said like just amazing it's almost like I, i'm creating like an arrangement of them and i'm, I'm placing them in this uh, in this nearby vase after i give them a quick fry in a nearby batch of oil that I prepare as well, allowing them to take on a very light kind of crispiness to them that um, the Digimon around here probably wouldn't be aware of. Alongside that, I chop up the fries into various different um, potato and cube-like shapes, and I... What's, what's a good thing? I actually arrange what appears to be almost like a puzzle that is just crafted entirely out of potato. It's a very, it's a simple puzzle. It's not, it's not like a thousand dollar or a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, but it has just enough complexity to its shapes that if one were to try and begin taking it apart, they would have a little bit of difficulty putting it back together. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I I just want to give a little addition to that as well, of for for you Spectre. Mm -hmm. you, have you ever seen the 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 cake videos where is it cake or is it real? 
Mm -hmm. That's the level of like detail work you're able to do. Very nice. Uh, uh, Spectre looks over at Charles. So how are the french fries coming? Uh, you know, it's uh, doing okay. Might have burned a batch or two. Oh. Uh, tried that making this picks up, picks up one of the french fries and it like wilts a little. Oh. Good job, Spectre. Or good job, Charles. Oh, uh, thanks. Hey, look, I made scallop potatoes. <laughs> I think I think that's something we could definitely use. Um do we have do we have any cheese on hand? Maybe maybe we can do something with that. Make like a um like a flowing river of scallop potatoes or something. I found this uh, cheese in a can. Spectre looks a brioche. Is that any good? It's better than what we used back in our time. All right. I mean, let's. All right, let's give it a shot. And together, we we kind of like craft this um, this little scenery of like a flowing field of um, of this cheese with the scalloped potatoes, kind of forming the base and the um, the river of it. The crispy flowers are placed around, and sitting right in the middle of it all is the um, now baked uh, potato puzzle. Okay. The french fries are just conveniently left out. <laughs> They're mm -hmm. num nums. Now, don't forget with the french fries, add a little bit of salt. Well, I was going to try and build this uh, statue of Domino out of pickles, but the uh, kind of didn't work out. It's stupid. You know, but there is one thing you can do for us, Charles. Every work of art, every scene needs color. What can we do to add some color to this? Yeah, a bit of color, a bit of color. Well, I suppose could try to add some leaves around the flowers. You just cut up some lettuce and make it look all natural like. Uh, Mm -hmm. Or else, what do you think would be the perfect addition? Uh, I'm not too sure. i never done this uh, art stuff too often, you know, back in Hope's Bastion. Well, I think the idea with the leaves is actually not too bad. Um, I feel like we could do with a bit of red. Bit of red. Charles, do you happen to know anything that might be red we could use? Well, I found this bottle of red stuff in the kitchen. It was right next to the uh, the, the next to the can of, the canned cheese. Yeah, oh, it's a bit um, like blood. Let's let's take let's take a look at it. And he kind of like takes the bottle and pops it open and gives it a sniff. It's it's um it smells a little sweet. It's um and he takes a look at the label on the side of the bottle. Catch up Why was something falling behind? And he chuckles at his own little joke. Alright. Takes one of Charles' French fries and like dips it in and sniffs it again. Uh here you go, Charles. Try this. Uh Still a little full from the olive I had for breakfast, but uh, I suppose a bite wouldn't hurt. He takes a bite of this fry and explodes. <laughs> the flavor of ketchup is too powerful for the Charles. Oh no, Charles! I, I, I died was just and I do anything. I was just meaning, you know, the fact that he eats nothing. Oh, he overeats. Oh, so this is a this is a scene from a. Uh... My brain shut off in the middle of that thought. British comedy, very dry, three of them. One of them has the, it's only, but only a scratch joke. Monty Python? 
Yeah, this is a Monty Python skit. Got it. Oh yeah, what's his name, Mister Something? He, it was like R rated because of all the vomit. He exploded. Boom. All right, what, what's what's the experience like for you? Yeah, yeah, it's a little tangy, but uh, a little sweet. With the salt, it can fry. You know, it's uh, you know it. it uh, it's not too bad, actually. Hmm. I. Okay, and dips another French fry in and, and takes a bite. Oh, oh, that pairs very well with the crispiness. It, uh, brioche, give, give this give this a try. That could use a little more salt. Ah, uh, well, that that that's fair, but I I think this might be just the little bit of color we need here. And he, he takes like a set of a um, couple of paint brushes from nearby. Don't ask me why they're there. Let's decorate. And there we go. And I'm assuming at this point we we paint the things and it's looking like a nice field of red flowers, the yellow river, crispy potato scene, obsolete to die for. Yes, you did very, very well. And this is going to be something that will knock their socks off. I still think Brioche is probably sitting there like, guys, I know what ketchup is. I'm pre-war. <laughs> <laughs> I have to let them explore on themselves. Uh, but Jace, Asher, what about you guys as they are crafting this masterpiece? Jace has access to the the, 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 the very scary TM folder and is going yes. to look for nice and easy recipes for the boom booms and then writing out a field guide and then stopping at one point looking Mer or Percy dead in the eyes and going, you, you can read, right? He nods. Okay, good. Hey, Asher, pop quiz. What's up? So, when you're out in the field and you're not sure what to eat, what do you do? Definitely don't touch the green stuff. Ah, uh, well, under normal circum, no, you look for an animal and eat whatever it, e it eats, including the green stuff. No, definitely not the green stuff. <sighs> I have it's seen enough there. of the green stuff to know that it's bad. Okay, I guess I'll just never make you uh, ants in a log ever again. Betrayal. And I, I but, guess but, but that But that's white stuff. No, celery is green. And I, I guess this means uh, the peas in the pod is over. And oh, sweet beans are green. The thing that I your nickname comes from. I, I guess I can't feed you oh, those anymore. Um, Wait. Okay, no maybe some green money? stuff is okay. That's what I thought. Ooh, we should totally find some sweet beans while we're out here because... Well, okay, technically the pod is green. The, the beans themselves are red, but that's beside the point. I like the pods. Nobody else does. I was fully expecting Asher to say, well, what do we do when we hunt? we're hungry and we're out in the wild? We starve! <laughs> I'm a better father than that, damn it. All right, here you go, Percy. This is uh, easy to get stuff in this notebook. This notebook's uh, general survival, how to gather materials, how to keep crops in a low, uh, general nighttime strategy. Uh, sadly, Spectre's not here. He does all the, the, the protecting self thing. I do the hunting. So, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum. But if given the chance, we'll get you something.
Walker. Was I muted? Yes. I've been uh, muted for 30 minutes! That one was long enough for me to grab the food. I'm grabbing it. <laughs> Can I have that again, please? Uh, I was talking. It's like, why isn't anyone hearing me? Uh, this notebook is... One notebook Jace is offering over, he states, is basically the explosive. The other one is a field survival guide. Mm. And uh, uh, how to, you know, do things incognito. So nod and eagerly accept them. Uh, these are short guides. I, I don't have time to, you know, write the big book, but uh, important notes is staking out, knowing your target, uh, keeping a low profile, uh, planning food ahead is really important. Um, as I said to Asher there, uh, find a like animal, a mammal, or something similar to you and eat whatever it eats. If that doesn't work, just kill it and eat it. It's probably fine. No, not excitedly as he listens, just like looking at Jace, like this is so awesome. Um, yeah, I apologize that Spectre's not here. He would teach you how to like do the guerrilla warfare and keeping people out of your turf kind of thing. I, that's not my specialty. Uh, I was way more focused on hunting and killing. Um, yeah, so as much as I remember from pre war. Uh, my timeline. Uh, certain nuts and berries are in there that I remembered off the top of my head. And, uh, yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, I think I'm picking you up pretty quick. Uh, and you're a really great teacher, Jace. I wouldn't say I'm a teacher. I would say that I'm just handing you a notebook of stuff. And this helps. Point pokes at the helmet. I actually I mean, didn't you're... know that she could make so many things out of fertilizer. I'm kind of slightly terrified of the farmers back home now. <laughs> that explains a few things. More than a few things. Well, I mean, you, you took the time to teach me this and tell me this. So, I mean, that makes you a teacher, and you gave me these books, too. Yeah, I wouldn't call myself a teacher. Look, kid, uh... You got a really hard road ahead of you, and if you can get you and yours out of here, do so. I don't think this mess is your fault. Well, you helped me, so it's only fair if we help you, though, right? If you need it. Eh. Take care of yourselves first. We'll be fine out here. After all, apparently, we come back. Well, I still want to be able to help you, though. Yeah, help me by helping yourselves. Blow a bunch of shit up. Free yourselves. Live good lives. That's how you help. Go nod his head slowly. And never be like us. Never do what they're doing out there. It's disgusting. It's gross. I hate it. I kind of want to stab people. I promise I won't do anything like that. Good. I don't want to have to kick your ass. I hope you don't. Well, you should at least be safe now. Uh, Asher, anything to add? Probably not. Uh, so, I, I, I'm thinking, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you, uh, bring entertainment with you. Being out in mm -hmm. the wilderness can be very boring. Yeah, sure, they're not gonna have... You make up board games, yes. Yeah! Bring some board games. What are board games? Asher's eyes light up as he looks right, over at Jace. We're going to be busy for about the next two hours. Have fun, Asher. Oh, no, you're joining Mag us. Oh, God damn it. Magna, 
Magna, Magna, Magna, detour this with something. Magna? What What's you want me to do? I'm being dragged into board game time. I'm being dragged to cuddle time, so I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, do you need any condoms? I don't think we're on that step yet. Uh-huh. I'll take them, so. Just feel on the safe side. Um, Wait, I already gave you all my condoms. <laughs> oh, I'm an out of game. Just heads up. In about like eight minutes, I have to dip out. I'll be back in like 20 minutes afterwards. Just because work. All right, Asher. Let's. Let's. Uh, all right. Yeah, let's do the board game thing. Asher is bringing up the rule books for Digifinder on his Valve doc. What's that? Oh, this is a Valve doc. It's got lots of fun stuff on it. And I'm going to teach you how to play a game called Digifinder. Yeah. This is 3.5. I don't think 1.8 is even out yet. Oh. Look who's making the first one. A a am I going to disrupt the timeline with this? Asher, I just spent an hour writing on a notebook that it describes how to make explosives. I think we're fine at this point in time. <laughs> okay, let's teach him. All right. Fine. I used to like this game. <laughs> what do you mean used to? Pats your head. I got old. You know, you, you can never grow out of this. No way. I got. I also got stupider. I miss <laughs> Thacko. I just don't understand why it's so simple now. It used to be low rolls are good, and now high rolls are good. I, never mind. Let's just teach him. Okay. So, first off, you gotta make a character. And you got all of these uh, shiny math rocks, and you throw them around. And it helps you determine things. Uh-huh. Uh, I guess we lost uh, Taldarius at that. <laughs> oh, oh, no. We must perform the summoning ritual to bring him back. All right, doing it, Burb. Revolving door action, go. Quick, somebody bring in the replacement Taldarius to fill in the spot like we used to have to do. Oh, yeah, that. All is fine. Seems the screen is doing just all right. But either way, uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess we just uh, fade to black with this scene of uh, Asher and Jay settling down to... Uh, Teach him how to do pa uh, Digifinder. Jeez, Ash is here too, so he's going to have to learn. Whew. Ash is getting dragged in. <laughs> if uh, I have Ash to go through this, Ash is getting dragged in. Ash is looking uh, confused a little bit, but he g walks over to join as well. Sit down. We used to call this family time. Then it became friends over time. Then it became a weekly event. Then it became a bi-weekly event. Welcome to Asher's favorite game. You're going to know it for the future because you're playing with us when I get dragged into it. Deal with it. He'll nod his head slowly. And then when uh, there was I'll also the best. game that we happened to do whenever we had everybody available, or at least a couple of people available. Yeah, Wizard Mun was good at that. And it kept you all distracted so I could actually clean the house. Wait, you said you were going into the dungeon during those. I was in the dungeon during those. The dungeon gets dusty, okay? 
あー That's not what I mean and you know it. But I can't argue with the、uh, semantics. So, why do we play this? Percy is going to ask slowly. Because it's fun! It gives you something to do and talk with your friends about and、uh, hang out, and it、uh, can help build、uh, relationships and、uh, bonds and.、Uh, yeah! Mahaha!、Mm -hmm. Plus, you get to really be evil. Yep, totally、uh, evil, Mr. Paladin. Well, yeah, but my people. Obviously, the evil is black. But they, they, they wound up being、uh, black guards most of the time. Yeah. Mm hmm. Like helping the poor. Totally black guard behavior. Uh, the poor human is going to look very, very confused. Don't worry, you'll get in time, buddy. Long story short, it's a pretend game where we roll things to make them random so that way not everything's an auto success. That way we can escape reality for a little bit and live in a happy little world where we get to control things and feel important. It also is great to do with friends and it keeps you busy and it keeps you distracted. And it's just generally fun. Basically, pretend like you're not here and you're something else. There you go. You're playing now. It, 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 can, very it can also help you、uh, with teamwork. Magna, are you sure you don't want to play? Oh, he's already gone.、Um, I'm dipping out in just like one minute, but. Hey, babe, do you want to play with them? Uh. Gar will nod his head slowly. Okay, well, we're getting dragged in. Here we go. Oh, look, a full party. Do 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 do. Magna's not allowed to be the cleric. I was gonna be the rogue anyway. I want to try <clears throat> being a traitor for an absolute reason. <laughs> Yes, I know how cliche it is. Trust me. <laughs> so, if Magna intentionally tries to be a traitor, does that mean he accidentally ends up helping all the time? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, kind of reminds me of that one meme where this guy, where they say, like, what if this guy <laughs> became president, realized he didn't want to become the president, tried to screw it up, but ended up doing everything right? Oh, tried to kill the vice president? Turns out he was a spy. Okay, I have to go. I'll be right back. Gotcha. Drive safe. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Yeah, Bye. it might take me a little over 20 minutes just because I have to lock up another building, but I'll be back as soon as I can. Drive、okay. safe. My energy is starting、all. to fade too. I don't know if I'll be around for much longer. Refocus on them, Kerr, for the time being, so that way they can. Your specter can get in before he passes out. Yes, because、uh, I think over in our end we're we're doing Digi Finder. We're we're gone. <laughs> Unless you want to set up a whole other campaign within this campaign that these characters then have to do. <laughs> because I am capable of doing that doesn't mean I'm going to. Thank、Inception. you. Inception. Yeah, go for it. I'll be all right. Specter's turn. Turn spotlight embryo, Charles Inspector. As you guys begin to move everything out, you can see the pace has begun to、uh, build a little bit. All the other Digimon seem a little nervous, but when they see what you're doing, <laughs> even the ones who look like they're almost frantic actually stop and look and just like, "Whoa, what is that?" And you begin to get a few Digimon who actually are starting to follow you a little bit. 
Okay. Yeah. We... Now make sure not to raise that side too high so it doesn't tip over. Yep. No, no nibbling. No nibbling. This has to be perfect. This is our introduction to everything else. And it Char doesn't. Charles, I said no nibbling. <laughs> Nah, it's, it's, uh, it just looked all right, you know. Looked pretty good. Not oh, God, I'm getting so full. Hmm. And it doesn't take too long for you okay. guys to make it to the church. Okay. Oh. Oh God. Just keep thinking about how things can go wrong. I'm just getting real nervous about dropping this thing. It's not this thing I'm necessarily worried about. This is this is our chance to change history. Oh yeah. No, you're right. I should just think about all the money we're gonna get off this thing. Uh yeah, think about that for a bit. So, as you guys are getting everything set up, Holru comes walking out. And he is just going to stare at everything you did. And it's just like a look of wonder comes over his face as he slowly approaches. Uh, you weren't supposed to see this just yet. I... If it's supposed to be even more grand than this, then I have no idea how you would accomplish such a thing. Oh, it's not that. It was wanted to kind of, you know, do a bit of a presentation, but um, Ta -da. surprise. This is what we were talking about when we were discussing earlier. This is. This is beautiful. It is. And it's practical, too. Everything you see here, it can be consumed. It can be reutilized. And it kind of, in a way, makes these works of art just all that much more precious. Because they are... Not like a one-time thing. Eventually it'll fade or it'll get eaten. But it can be appreciated in the moment. And that's kind of why I made these flowers to help to help symbolize that that concept. Like much like when a flower blooms and eventually fades away as it as it dies. He'll nod his head slowly. It, you crafted all this from simple food? You made simple this food. work of beauty? And the thing is, and Spectre looks over Brioche, there's a lot more food out there than I think there are Digimon. And in a way, this is kind of antithesis to that whole idea. You know, Digimon kind of tend to stick around, but food, the food is very much more finite, very much more precious because of its finite, finitude. He nods his but, head very slowly. I say, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this in and we can we can discuss further there i i fear with the crowd we're gathering that uh this might not last much longer yes yes i've already had one scout report in there is trouble brewing and coming here what do you mean well those we'll, i guess we'll we'll, we'll talk in some He'll nod, and he will actually assist you in getting this inside. Okay. 
And yeah, as with you four guys... of us carrying it, I'm sure we don't have to make a roll for that, I hope. Yeah, nah, you're good. And as you guys get it all settled in, he is going to let out a sigh. Those filthy abominations are on the march again. I'm supposing you're meaning those creatures that uh, that we fought earlier. He nods. Their touch is death to Digimon. Yes. Very, very nasty things. That's yeah, why uh, that. Charles here prefers doing the uh, non-touching route. There's a whole swarm of them coming. And we believe that this town is their target. No. From what I understand, there's the High King's right-hand man here and you know, a squad or an army of his. They should be able to take care of that problem just fine. I doubt there's any reason for concern. From what I've heard, the High King's knights fail and his handpicked soldiers vanished through some sort of witchery uh, portal that opened up, and they have not been seen since. Does Spectre know about this already? Uh, no, but you would have heard about from the others uh, about... Um... Blah, 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 about Baal arriving, trying to talk to you guys, and basically being sent off on a wild goose chase. Mm. I... the kid came through first. Yeah. So, his men fell. His army. No, they retreated back. They're still on the way here. It's about two days travel to get here from the farm that they were at. And apparently some sort of barrier is still holding the creatures back, but they do not think it will last more than a day. So my advisors tell me we have three, maybe four days before these creatures may arrive here. And we're currently attempting to figure out... What we are going to do to deal with such a problem, the the t brain, please, words. The death toll will likely be high, considering how dangerous these things can be to a Digimon, even one who is trained to fight. Vector, we probably need to go take care of it. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we've we fought them plenty of times. We can d do it again. You said three okay. days, right? He nods. Then we got three whole days to get people out. And prepare. In fact, we could probably do it in just two. Spectre uh, takes a look at all the food. Why don't we? Why don't we just take a moment and just celebrate? Just relax, you know. Charles, I think uh, you were going to say something. Uh yeah. It's just you know, uh, should be no problem uh, for us, you know. I uh, gave me Spectre and uh, Brioche could probably handle them. Uh, zero casualties and all. We're real good at this yeah. kind of thing. You would do this yeah. for us? You've shown us hospitality. Yeah, no one's tried to kill us yet. You know. <laughs> well, you will not. Okay. And where we're and where we're from, life is valuable. Every life is is precious. Even even those that are seemingly enemies, just coming out from the wastelands. It 
Inspector kind of looks around. What's kind of going on here, it's not what we're used to. But we'll fight these things because life, all life, regardless of how it is represented or how it might form or come to be, is precious. He'll nod his head slowly. Well, I think that crowd outside is getting a little hungry. How about we introduce the table? He'll nod his head. A grand idea. We can talk through some of the more specifics of how we can introduce this idea to other areas, other cities, help make this place a spot on the map. But that can happen after we ensure that this remains a spot on the map. And, of course, I will see to it that you get a proper reward for all of this. Well, I'll let, uh, I'll let Charles handle that. Ah, uh, you're too kind. Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get this stuff out the forest, Dale. <laughs> Sounds like they have deep pockets. <laughs> but All right. I'm actually thinking this might be a decent spot to end considering two of our players are missing right now and our third is getting very tired and i don't want to go too far with him yeah i'm um, also getting tired so yeah unfortunately this is usually about the time i started heading to sleep but so i'm just i'm just pretty tired right now I'm okay ending here. I think this is a decent spot if you guys are all tired and such. Yeah, it might be best. I mean, unless you want to do this. Well, we do have something very nice that you will unlock in the next session, though, and I will add this to my notes. Nice. And I planted a, I planted the idea that I wanted to plant, um, which was my primary goal with, with for this whole thing. We'll see if it catches. And the silly thing that I was thinking of doing the one-on-one -on -one with Magna was telling him he doesn't have to be the failure that he thinks he is, because this is identifying what the current time is. <laughs> if everybody thinks of him as the traitor, then oh. that's how they're going to treat him as. But oh, yes, yes, there is one thing I forgot. Uh, Asher, uh, Jace. Uh, you see that Percy has found a uh, stuffed Labramon and is currently holding the plushie. This is his plushie now. Grumble. <laughs> see, I told you you'd make a good... Wow, my hallucinations were very accurate. Look how cute that is. Just as cute as you, head bump. <laughs> <laughs> and where did the... the influence get sent? Uh, I think I've got all of the influences. Uh, Wolf Mage was asking. Yeah, that was the that was the one. That was the one. Yeah, it's uh, oh, it's interesting. Uh, hold on, there's a hmm, it's a what's that in the air? I smell. Hmm. It smells like a, some kind of marketable plushie in the area. <laughs> Keep it away from him. Oh, don't worry. I, I have a feeling I'm going to have to slap Charles a couple of times tonight. I'll be fine. Jace, I'm spoken for. Jeez. Hey, 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 Domino. Can I slap up yeah. your boy a bit? Yes, you may, darling. All right, Charles, come here. Uh, don't mind the gag. We just okay. don't want anybody hearing you scream. Oh, uh, no, that's all right. I prefer him anyways. And this will cost you 500 gold pieces. Now, smile. Oh, oh, you oh, 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 can't. <laughs> you can't do it. No, let's just let's negotiate this here. Smile for the camera. Uh, Domino. 
this is uh, is this kind of it the, the cameras for domino don't worry they'll be back later uh, uh, I'm paying you for this I have royalties you know sure you can get those from domino hey hey zim hmm we're, we're making this go weird. We should probably end before me and Charles keep running this. <laughs> don't worry, Jason. I mean, I was I'll, I'll enjoying it, but okay. Oh, don't worry. You get to enjoy the parts after we go dark. Oh, my. And there's the magnet transformation scene in fan art. Fan art, oh, fan my. Art. oh my. I like how that has a punching dagger on it. I like punching daggers. They're neat. <laughs> no. Off of the ties by fear. I just love that. It's so adorable. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today for Data Resistance Squad Scar. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Blue Sky, Patreon, and more. There on the website as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. It is your support that keeps this channel alive and going. I cannot do this without your guys' help and support, so thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by simply sharing the stream around. As well as coming by, hanging out, grabbing some packs of cards to stream loots, or by tipping to the channel as well as using our Humble Bundle partner link. But for now, thank you so much for joining everyone, and I bid you the most fondest, a duke. Bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye!